The first of our big races this afternoon, we've made our way down into the yard here for the Queen Mother Memorial Cup. This is over the 2400 metres. Jenny, there's not many of those races throughout the season here in Hong Kong. We're on at Group 3 level. Yeah, not at all. Um, so looking forward to this, that's for sure. We've got a very short price favourite, haven't we, in Eagle Way, um, who is obviously uh, good, quite good over this distance, no doubt about it, and he should be very hard to beat. But um, there's a few interesting runners that haven't had a great deal. I think Gold Mount's a very interesting runner, um, having won over 2400 in the UK prior to coming. And, um, you know, he was really impressive when he did that. He's only had the two starts here, so there could be further improvement to come. Could indeed. He's coming out of the Darwin. Primitivo was his name when he raced in the UK, if you follow the action uh, from Europe. Um, John Eagleway is off. He was beaten by Beauty Generation yep. last time out in a real ding-dong battle, but he's better off at the waist. He's better off at the waist. He had to make a bit of a mid-race move there as well, which I think probably just meant that the tank was a little bit empty fuel-wise in the final few yards, and uh, Beauty Generation was able to, able to overhaul him. As Jenny has mentioned, he's a Queensland derby winner as well, Eagle Way, so 2,400 is right up his street. And it's just interesting to see the derby form lines, isn't it? We've got seven horses that contested the derby running here, a couple of horses that contested the derby going back in trip later on, but these are the real stairs. As far as the trip is concerned, Jenny, there's very few, well, certainly with course and distance form, but a lot coming out of that last run behind Beauty Generation, you could still say will improve. I'm thinking of horses like Donozo and Helene Charisma will improve for the step up. Yeah, I think Donozo it just didn't go to plan last time either. I could give him a little bit of an excuse for that uh, ride, I suppose. Um, so I could see him improving. He's not an overly big-bodied horse, that fellow, but he could improve. Um, but yes, I think we're going to find out a lot more about the staying uh, endurance here, no doubt about it, for some of these ones that we don't know so well. Yeah, and Helene Charisma, he's, yeah. was he a little bit flat last time? It, it looked like he was getting there and then just sort of last well, time I was a, a, lot, a lot of shrewdies fancied him for that race didn't they and he didn't quite go as well as some expected but I think that you've got to be a bit patient with this horse he hasn't been here too long of course he's winner of the Grand Prix de Paris when he was called Mont Ormel last year and I think he's got every chance of running well here certainly I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be putting a line through him yeah, he wanted, he wanted to lay in a little bit, though, didn't yeah. he? And it just I thought he'd probably had enough on the line, but maybe he needed that just for his fitness. Quick word, Jenny, on Andoyas, who's been in <laughs> great heart, hasn't he, at Happy Valley? Yes. Um, yes, he's stepping up in class here, but you can't knock his will to win, can you? No, look, he's, uh, he's got a big heart, no doubt about it. He's not much to look at, and I can guarantee you I haven't even seen him, but he won't get into the top <laughs> four because he's not a terribly good walker, he's not a great type, but he, he's a very honest performer, and under handicap conditions, I suppose he does come into some sort of consideration, mm. but um, it's a big step forward, though, isn't it, a, a, amongst these, I think. Absolutely, yeah. Well, the horses are coming into the yard, the first one already in, um, and that is uh, Helene Supercell. We'll take a really quick check on the market Paul of the uh, the favorite here for the Queen Mother Eagle way after the all ups has now gone on to odds against he's at 2.1 he's the favorite beauty generations at 5.6 6.2 Helene charisma 6.8 about gold mount and a 9.3 about Donozo. but Helene superstar is the first one that uh, we're focusing on screen here at the moment uh, Jenny he's uh, had plenty of starts this horse he's one of the older brigades uh, Helene superstar 39 starts for his three wins yeah, look, he's, a, he's always a horse that carries a fair bit of condition when he races. He's still 1,211 pounds, and this is around about his normal body weight. Lovely natured horse, very quiet. He's got a fair bit of filler in those front feet, um, and he's had that. He, that's sort of been an ongoing thing for him. So obviously he's got bad hooves, and uh, that's something that they've had to deal with. Um, I think, you know, the way he's going against a few of these, he really would need to lift his, his game to be competitive, I feel. Um, he, he has been a very good horse in the past, but um, for me, on looks, I, only, I could only give him a place chance. Next one in is number one, Jenny Beauty Generation, the horse that we talked about, got in that fantastic battle with Eagle Way last time out. How is he looking for a revenge mission? Yeah, look, he's a pretty nice-natured uh, horse, this fellow, even though they've got a fair bit of gear on his head. Um, but uh, he walks out nice and cleanly. He's a really fit-looking horse as well going into this, and he should be. This is his seventh race start for the season. His coat remains in beautiful order. He's got a really healthy glow to that at the moment. And um, he's very alert. Uh, obviously, he's got to carry the big weight. That's got to be a concern. But he couldn't be any fitter, and gee, looks well. He's been beautifully presented. Yeah, even with the weight turnaround, I think right him off at your peril. He's, um, he's a very tough, honest uh, campaigner with a bit of class, or more than a bit of class about him as well. That's uh, Beauty Generation. He's one of them who will enjoy the step up in trip. Basic Trilogy certainly has the ability. He's drawn barrier 13, but I sometimes struggle to, to pick him, Jenny. 
Uh, yeah, look, he's, he's likely to go forward. He's a potential sort of on-pace runner. His coat's in great order. He just needs to loosen just marginally in front, but uh, he's a very calm and relaxed type of horse. He's also quite alert. Um, I, I think, you know, if he loosens up in front, um, and I often mention it with him, so it's normal how he's walking at the moment, um, I think he looks perfectly OK. I could leave him with there with a rough place chance. Yeah, he's fifth in this race last year, basic trilogy, but gate 13 is going to be a bit tricky. Of course, correcting something I said, it's Eagle Way who needs uh, revenge or beauty generation. Uh, uh, talking about that uh, top horse, but yeah, basic trilogy has, uh, well, he's got a good record over the longer trips in Hong Kong, but uh, the form this season has been a bit average. Here he is, though, Eagle Way, the favourite, currently even money Queensland derby winner. Hasn't done a huge amount wrong since he's come to Hong Kong. No, he hasn't. Um, obviously, uh, gate 14 for him last time. He's uh, a strange sort of walking horse. I mentioned this last time. Uh, uh, he is always walking like this, so don't be put off by it. He just chucks those front legs out like that. Um, he's, he's a lovely horse. He's really athletic, very fit. His coat's in absolutely superb condition here. And, um, and he's nice and alert as well. So he does parade well, the favourite. Eagle way, that is. Uh, Supreme Profit, huge odds about Supreme Profit, who if they went slow and he got tactical, you could see him maybe get on his bike early. Well, we've got a lot of international guests in town. If they were seeing him for the first time, they might be mistaken for thinking he was in foal. That is just too many <laughs> races like that. He's always such a tubby type, um, but that is just him. He carries that condition and he carries it fast on occasions as well because uh, his overall record's terrific. Uh, he's a winner of nine races and he's always looked like this when he's won. Solid, stocky, strong type, sensible type. He looks good by his standards. The next is Helene Charisma Jenny, who was fifth in the derby and then fifth in that uh, handicap last time out behind Beauty Generation and Eagle Way. Um, yeah, look, uh, just checking his weight, but he's actually put on a pound. He looks like he's lost weight, um, but uh, he's, he's got himself a little bit wound up here. He's uh, just a bit on his toes when that bell went, and he's just starting to get slightly warm as well. He's quite tense, but he is very, very fit looking. Um, so, you know, just a, a touch of tenseness about him. I think fitness might take him a long way, though, so I'm going to say place chance for him. Yeah, it's uh, 6.40 at the moment about Helene Charisma, a Group 1 winner over this trip in France. Uh, gold mount, just a couple of starts uh, here in Hong Kong. Uh, Jenny, uh, very impressive on debut, down the field in the derby. Yeah, he was, um, but it was only his second race start as well, so it might have all just uh, happened a bit too quick for him as well, Gold Mount. Um, De Souza to ride him. Now, he's, he's not the most attractive type, I've got to say. He's only small, he's very plain type, but he's, he's one of those sort of staying types that um, defies, probably defies his looks. Um, so small, plain, fit, well-behaved. He does walk out well. His coat's still a little bit wintry, but healthy. Um, but uh, fluent in his walking action. So, he, you know, he's, n he's no glamour by any means, but he's fluent. The next is number seven, Jenny Prawn Barber, who will go down in history as the eighth uh, winner for Joe Moreira, that never to be forgotten day in March. How's he looking today? Um, Prawn Barber, he looks good. Yeah. He looks well, um, but he's awkwardly drawn in gate 12, so he's going to be up against it, I feel. Nice, healthy looking coat on him. He's really fit, he's fluent, he does look well. So, if he was to run well at big odds, it wouldn't shock. No, not at all. That uh, change up in the gear as well. Blinkers off, the hood goes on. Can sometimes uh, make the difference. He's probably the second string as far as the cruise runners, uh, sorry, the size runners uh, are concerned. We'll see Denozo in a second. Before that, though, anticipation, Jenny. He gets the blinkers back on. Also coming out of that uh, beauty generation race, he was beaten seven lengths on that occasion. He can often be a bit arrogant in the parade, just sort of throws his head around here and there. Um, he's just, you know likes to show who's boss and he's not the easiest of rides either uh, gate 10 for him i think his recent form's just been okay he still maintains his condition he's very solid strong bulky type but it, look he's okay he's just his racing attitude is a bit questionable he often does want to bite in races and he swishes his tail at the moment so i'm happy to go without him the next is number nine uh, dinozo jenny who was uh, third behind beauty generation and eagle way last time out Yep, now his weight is exactly the same as it was last time. He's a horse that is quite a lightly framed type and he doesn't tend to carry too much excess condition. 1,022 pounds is what he weighs in here uh, again today. So uh, I need him to come around this corner so I can get a better look at him. I thought he was a tad dull in his coat last time, but it looks like it's uh, really turned the corner quite quickly, actually. He's, he's fine skin, but really quite healthy looking in his coat. And um, he looks in pretty good order. He's a very fit looking horse. He's quite athletic as well. So uh, I'd leave him there with some chance. 
News the best turned out coming through. That goes to Beauty Generation as uh, Zach jumps on board and makes his way out. Now, uh, Brett, are we hoping for a good report here, Jenny, on Happiler Baby? He likes him a lot this afternoon. Well, he always gets a good report, this guy. He's a really nice athletic type. He's, he's got plenty of scope about him. His coat's in really good order as well. He's really, really fit looking. Um, just looking at his body weight, he's only dropped one pound since that last effort. And it wasn't a bad effort, but he probably did have all favours. Um, I like his fluency, though, and if you do fancy him, he still looks well. Yeah, he's over, there's no doubt about it at the moment. Uh, I think he'll run well. The 2,400 metres will hold no fears for him whatsoever. Anticipation, next... sorry, just kick the oh. rail there, just for uh, people if well, you're uh, interested in him. He's a bit of a character, as you've uh, articulated already, Jenny. The next is number 12, though, Circuit Hassler for Tony Cruz and Matthew Chadwick. Oh, we've got Andoyas going off too. Um, OK, uh, the 12 uh, Circuit Hassler, um, is, he's got himself a little bit warm. Um, and he started to yeah, just sweat up a touch now. But he looks he's a lovely, neat type of horse, and he looks quite fit. He's very fluent as well, but he is warm. Now we move on to Andoyas, and I think the picture probably tells us uh, plenty there, Jenny. He's getting very keyed up. <laughs> that's why he's not going into the top four boys. I would have predicted it, and that's exactly uh, the reason. You can see how hot and drenched he is. He was also very stirred up and nervous, um, and he's not a smooth walking horse. He's got himself into an absolute state. Now, this is not unusual, but it's probably a bit more so than usual. Yeah, he's been running in Class 3 of late, Andoyce, but he's been winning in Class 3, and he'll want every inch of this trip as well. He's a thorough stayer and uh, should go uh, very well. So there you go, they're making their way out onto the track. We're going to get uh, the thoughts of Jenny very shortly, but meantime, we can go to Paul for the betting. Eagle Way, still uh, the favourite here. He's now even money, so he did come into odds against after the uh, all-ups went through, but he's now back to even money, so he's pretty short. If you want to bet against some uh, beauty generations at 5.7, Helene Christmas at 6.6, .6, Gold Mounts at 6.7. They're the next ones in the market. Then we get to Denozo, who's at 9.7. Uh, they're the single-figured runners, and there's a big jump after that, in fact. We go all the way out to 27 about Happiler Baby. But uh, it's all about this uh, eagle way. He's pretty short at the moment after his good track work during the week. But there's uh, some good value to be had just in behind him. As Gold Mount makes his way out onto the track. Well, we know Andoyas isn't going in, Jenny, so we can forget <laughs> about him. But who <laughs> does make the top Not four? Not saying he can't win. No, he no. just looks uh, an absolute yeah. basket case at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number one. Uh, beauty generation goes on top for me. Gee, he's been beautifully presented there uh, from the John Moore yard. He looks an absolute treat. So he's got the big weight to contend with here. That's my concern. But on looks, he has to go on top of number nine. I thought Denozo paraded beautifully as well. He's walking out really freely. Um, he's a very, very fit looking horse as well. And his overall record's not too bad either. Uh, the three, it definitely has to go in Eagle Way. The favourite, you're not getting any value about him. That's the thing. But he does look a treat. And you've got Joe on from Gate 4, so should get a good run. And obviously, the rest number seven prawn barber still looks well he looks like he's come out of that derby performance uh, looking well obviously it was a bit too rich for him there but um i can't fault him in any way shape or form so at odds he has to go in one nine three and seven there you go one on top from the paddock then beauty generation he was best turned out as uh, as well brett but um he's giving weight some very good horses this afternoon yeah that it is uh, andrew it's a terrific lineup really isn't it um handicap conditions of course no claim being a group three for any of the uh, apprentice riders I i'm going to go with a little bit of value here down in the weights hapala baby i think you look at the um the class and he's never tried group three level uh, but he gets in here with a very lightweight, he's drawn well, and he's run against a lot of the opposition in his last start, which was won by Beauty Generation. He was only two lengths away at the end, and he was closing off over the 2200. Alex Lye was aboard on that occasion. Derek Long's had a great season. He's riding with a huge amount of confidence. He's got the ideal barrier. And uh, I think if they sort of kick on a fair way from home, he is a horse that will just keep staying on. And with a lightweight, I'm giving him a good each-way chance in the race number 10. Hapala Baby, he's my long shot of the afternoon. Helene Charisma was a terrific run from him last start behind Beauty Generation. He sort of got caught wide. Um, he's obviously got outstanding credentials from France. I think he's quite well weighted in this race against the, the major players, which include Eagle Way. It was a tactical ride from Marrera last start, drawn better today. And Beauty Generation, well, he has to go in on his recent effort. He's got the top weight, but he's got a good barrier. Ten at a bit of value here for me. Hapala Baby from 5-3-1, but it's a thrilling contest. Yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? I'm, uh, I think the three, John 
more runners will, will uh, fight it out. Uh, I ended up going with Helene Charisma. He has won over the 2,400 metres in the uh, UK, and I think this has been sort of the, his on his horizon for a while, Helene Charisma, from Beauty Generation, who's been running in great heart at the moment and has performed the best of the three horses in the four-year-old series. Eagle Way, he's, uh, he's another horse that obviously has got the bit of draw now, and uh, the 24 will suit him as well. So I don't see too much amongst these three, but I went 5-1-3, and then for fourth, Denoso, I think he's a real stay in the making as well, and the 2400 will really suit him. So 5-1-3 and 9. Yeah, I think it will suit uh, Denoso with so much. In fact, I've put him on top. He's got a turnaround of five pounds with Beauty Generation for one and a half lengths, and he was staying on. I'm not saying that it won't suit Beauty Generation, the step-up trip, or Eagle Way for that matter, but at the prices, it's currently 9.70 about Denoso. I'm happy with that. Uh, six in for second, that's Gold Mount, who's, um, you've got to excuse him that Derby run last time out, but uh, as Jenny was saying earlier, he's going to eat up this 2,400 metres. He's a dangerous horse to leave out of your exotics, and then three and one, Eagle Way and Beauty Generation. Eagle Way waited to finish in front of him, um, so that's where we're heading, John. Nine, six, three and one, but uh, you could probably go wider as well. Uh, there are plenty of chances uh, definitely i've got the same trio as paul actually slightly different order going to go the three on top eagle where i think this will definitely bring out the best in him and his runs in all three legs of the four-year-old series are very good really considering he's probably really a 2400 meter horse certainly his australian form would suggest that and this will definitely bring out the best in him i think he's just got enough to uh, turn the tables on beauty generation he had a great tussle last time out but i think we might get a slightly different result here helen charisma ran well and he's uh, going in the numbers as well dinoza could definitely go uh, into him as well but i thought i'd try and find a little bit of value on the fourth line i'm going to go with andoyas right down at the bottom he's ever so slightly out of the handicap uh, and he's been plying his trade at happy valley in class three level this is a big step up in class but the lightweight the 2400 meters he's bred to want absolutely every inch of it and if they go a decent gallop out in front he'll be staying on or maybe one or two others have cried enough so three one five and 13 for me all right, I've gone with the top weight here, number one, Beauty Generation. I thought Zach gave him a fantastic ride last time, and he did get all favours. Now he's got to carry 133 pounds, so I'm a little concerned about the weight that he's got to carry here, but, oh, my gosh, he's just been presented so beautifully from the John Moore yard. He looks an absolute treat. So the one on top from number nine, Denozo, he's walking out really freely. He's a scopy athletic type. He looks fit and well, so he definitely goes in. The three, Eagle Way, should be very hard to beat. There he is, nice and relaxed behind the gates there. He looks in great shape as well. And uh, of the rest, number seven, at a bit of odds, there he is on screen. Gee, he looked well, Paul Barber. Um, we'll see if he can bounce back a, a little bit here as well. This will be his 10th run, so fitness no issue for him. One, nine, three. Three and seven. Right down at the start. A few of them getting warm, but it's a very warm afternoon here at uh, Chartin. Perfect conditions in actual fact. Uh, Eagle Way, Paul, the even money favourite. Yeah, it continues to be pretty solid here at even money. Bit of money coming in for Beauty Generations. He's now under 5.8, so he's a clear second favourite. Gold Mount's third favourite at 6.4, then 6.9 about Helene Charisma. Then we go out to 10 about Donoso. And then a big gap after that. So punters have sort of narrowed it down to those ones at this stage. Apple of Babies at 27. Then we go into the 50. Oh, 39 about Endorse and then 58 about Basic Trilogy. So uh, pretty, pretty solid favourite. Looking at Quinellas, a few Quinellas going through Basic Trilogy at a massive price. He's currently 58 and 11. And also uh, there's a few Quinellas going through Denozo as well, with sort of with some of the outsiders at big prices. All right, light flashing, the first one that's starting to move forward, and it is uh, Beauty Generation. We're all set here, John, for an absolute classic. A warm-up to the big one, the Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup. Absolutely, yeah, really looking forward to it. Of course, if you're watching in Europe, the UK, what have you, these types of races are uh, fairly commonplace over there. But here, they're a bit of a, a rarity, but there's some really talented animals uh, taking part in this. They're going in now, and we can hand straight up to Brett for the call. Thank you, John. Yes, moving in for our first feature, the Queen Mother Memorial Cup. Group 3, 2,400 metres, $3 million in prize money. We've got an odds-on favourite, Eagle Way, at 1.9, 5.9 for Beauty Generation, 6.6 .6 for Gold Mount, who was uh, very brilliant on debut, finished down the track in the derby. Helene Charisma, 7.2, and then we're out to $10 for Donozzo. 20 or better for the rest. Some late place money coming in for Gold Mount. But Eagle Way is the short price favourite. 2,400 metres for the Queen Mother Memorial Cup. Circuit Hassler, Donozzo still to move into the gates, along with Hapalar Baby, who's drawn position number one.
Joe Marrera made a tactical manoeuvre on Eagle Way last start. Drawn better today in gate number four. So stand by for a start. Race six, Sha 10, 2,400 metres, and they're on their way. There's no pace early from either Gold Mount or Helene Charisma, and Doyas in that category as well. In the middle part of the track, Circuit Hassler. Also Prawn Barbar, Anticipation, rolling forward. Helene Superstar nearer the inside, got away nicely, as did Beauty Generation. Hapala Baby holding a prominent spot on the rail, covered up by Donozo. Prawn Barbar has to settle three deep in the initial stages as they run past the judge with a circuit to travel. Eagle Way settled on the fence, worse than midfield. Travelling outside of him is Basic Trilogy, and then Andoyas between horses. Supreme Prophet's going to settle third last. Helene Charisma second last, the inside of Gold Mount. They head towards the back of the course, and Circuit Hassler has rolled on for Chadwick, and inside the mile leads by two lengths. Anticipation Deep Out pushing up into second spot on the outside of Helene Superstar. Beauty Generations had a lovely run through the first six or seven hundred. Two lengths further back to Hapala Baby inside of Donozo. Basic Trilogy can't get on the course. He's three deep. A length to Prawn Barber. Eagle Way hemmed it on the rail. Supreme Profit wider out moving. Third last is Andoyas as they reach the halfway point, 1,200 metres out. Then Helene Charisma and Gold Mount at the tail end of the field. Circuit Hassler really reduced the pace and Supreme Profit at the 1,000 whipped around them, went up to tackle him. And they eyeball each other now. Approaching the bend at the 900, Circuit Hassler and Supreme Profit. They've kicked on two lengths in front of Anticipation. Beauty Generation, Purton has not spent a penny. Basic Trilogy, three deep. Hapala Baby, the inside, needs some room to move. Helene Superstar Donozo coming into the race three deep. Eagle Way looking to shoulder into the clear. Into the three wide line approaching the 600. Prawn Barber, Helene Charisma left to one last dash at them. Then Andoyas and Gold Mount they corner in. And Circuit Hassler rolled off the fence. The run's there for Beauty Generation. Basic Trilogy Supreme Prophet Donozo winding up with Eagle Way. And Helene Charisma given full throttle down the middle. Eagle Way race to the lead. Helene Charisma is in within a half a length. Then Donozo, Gold Mount from the back and Prawn Barber, Eagle Way, Helene Charisma, survival of the fittest, Gold Mount closing with Donozo, Eagle Way fighting back on Helene Charisma and the Eagle has landed, Eagle Way from Helene Charisma and Gold Mount third, then Donozo, Prawn Barber and Doyas ran well, a long gap to Supreme Profit, Beauty Generation had his chance, Circuit Hassler likewise, Hapala Baby, Helene Superstar, Basic Trilogy and anticipation Eagle Way Helene Charisma Gold Mount Donozo there's a long gap between first and last Eagle Way John Moore Joe Marrera takes out the Queen Mother Memorial Cup they got a little tight in the final hundred, but Eagle Way has just outstayed Helene Charisma, who loomed as a really big threat. But Eagle Way has held him at bay. Three, five, terrific run goal, Matt. He was last when they cornered. There's a future for him in Hong Kong over the longer trips. Three quarters, one and three quarters, three, five, six, nine, fourth. 2.25.48. The time is extremely quick. Race 6, Sha 10, 2,400 metres, and they're on their way. There's no pace early from either Gold Mount or Helene Charisma, and Doyas in that category as well. In the middle part of the track, Circuit Hassler. Also Prawn Barbar, Anticipation, rolling forward. Helene Superstar nearer the inside, got away nicely, as did Beauty Generation. Hapala Baby holding a prominent spot on the rail, covered up by Donozo. Prawn Barber has to settle three deep in the initial stages as they run past the judge with a circuit to travel. Eagle Way settled on the fence, worse than midfield. 
Travelling outside of him is Basic Trilogy and then Andoyas between horses. Supreme Prophet's going to settle third last. Helene Charisma second last, the inside of Gold Mount. They head towards the back of the course and Circuit Hassler has rolled on for Chadwick and inside the mile leads by two lengths. Anticipation deep out pushing up into second spot on the outside of Helene Superstar. Beauty Generations had a lovely run through the first six or seven hundred. Two lengths further back to Hapala Baby inside of Donozo. Basic Trilogy can't get on the course. He's three deep. A length to Prawn Barber. Eagle Way hemmed it on the rail. Supreme Profit wider out moving. Third last is Andoyas as they reach the halfway point. 1,200 metres out. Then Helene Charisma and Gold Mount at the tail end of the field. Circuit Hassler really reduced the pace and Supreme Profit at the 1,000 whipped around them, went up to tackle him. And they eyeball each other now. Approaching the bend of the 900. Circuit Hassler and Supreme Profit. They've kicked on two lengths in front of Anticipation. Beauty Generation, Purton has not spent a penny. Basic Trilogy, three deep. Hapala Baby, the inside, needs some room to move. Elaine Superstar, Donozzo coming into the race, three deep. Eagle Way looking to shoulder into the clear, into the three wide line, approaching the 600. Prawn Barber, Helene Charisma, left to one last dash at them. Then Andoyas and Goldmount, they corner in. And Circuit Hassler rolled off the fence. The run's there for Beauty Generation. Basic Trilogy, Supreme Prophet, Donozzo winding up with Eagle Way. And Helene Charisma given full throttle down the middle. Eagle Way race to the lead. Helene Charisma is in within a half a length. Then Donozzo, gold mount from the back and prawn Barba, Eagle Way, Helene Charisma, survival of the fittest, gold mount closing with Donozzo, Eagle Way fighting back on Helene Charisma and the Eagle has landed, Eagle Way from Helene Charisma and gold mount. Yeah, two real thorough stairs there, but Eagle Way, he was always threatened uh, to do something like this in Hong Kong, has finally, well, he has won before here, uh, but he's got his uh, pet trip and he's uh, seen it out really well. He certainly did a great finish and no surprises, the first three, in actual fact, coming from off the pace, they went lightning quick yeah. um, in the early stages and overall time, 2.25.48, not a course record, but uh, it's a pretty quick... Well, it was already quick before Supreme Profit took off yeah. it as well and it put more pace into it, so... Um... Yeah, Kei Chung taking off very early there, but well done to the connections of Eagle Way. Uh, he's, uh, he's been presented really well, and um, yeah, well done to John getting this horse to win this race. Terrific horse and a fantastic ride. Yeah, absolutely. Another one for Marrera. And um, imagine this is all pointing towards, for a lot of these horses, the Champions and Chater Cup, but it'll be under different conditions. Will be, yep. It's, uh, of course, a top-class race here, a Group 1 race here in Hong Kong, so there's not a handicap, but... Uh, Eagle Way will be more than capable of handling himself at that sort of level. And, of course, he has a very similar profile to Werther, who we'll be seeing uh, not too uh, far from now. Of course, coming from out of that Queensland derby race. And uh, he, well, he hasn't quite necessarily got to, to the level of Werther yet, but uh, he's uh, going the right way. And uh, his, his runs in the four-year-old series were very commendable, and he's really come on for this particular trip today. And, of course, John has Quinelled the race with Helene Charisma, who did yep. want to lay in once again yep. under pressure. He did that last time as well. It's a little flaw in his uh, armour, that's for sure. Yeah, he's um, followed Eagle Way the right way round and uh, well, followed him to the line as well, three-quarters of the length. Just to put the time into perspective then, 2.25.48, the record, 2.24.6, held by a certain Viva Pataka. So he, yes. was, he was pretty handy. A two-time winner of the QE2 uh, himself. But uh, Joe Moreira skips off there. Denoza was solid on gold mount off the pace as well. He stayed on quite nicely, Jenny, too. He did run on well, didn't he? Mm. He's, uh, his form overseas suggested that this type of trip would be perfect for him. And uh, he certainly didn't disgrace, but not good enough as far as uh, winning goes. Eagle Way was. Yeah, he's uh, take a while. Gold mount hasn't been here that long. Uh, it might be take a while for him to settle in, but certainly 2,400 given his Royal Ascot form. I think he's going to be uh, the type of horse to really feature in something like the Champions and Chater this year. The treble so far for Joe Marrera. Yeah, in play betting for the Jockey Challenge um, has now been uh, halted as well, as it's deemed uncompetitive uh, as uh, Marrera wins in. Prawn Barber was a solid run, as went Andoyas. Uh, John, he certainly wasn't out of place here this uh, afternoon. No, was he? he was quite a long way back when they turned for home, but uh, he certainly picked one or two of them off. He stayed on really well. Interesting to see where they go with him next, because there aren't a huge, many, a huge amount of races for him uh, over sort of really extreme trips, but uh, yeah, he's had a very good season. The three big races here at Chartin, of course, over the mile and a half. It starts off with the Vars in December, um, here for the Queen Mother, and then we finish off with the, uh, the Champions and Chater. And uh, so hopefully we'll see a number of these horses uh, come back once more. We uh, have some amazing trophies, I've got to say, Andrew, but oh, that yes. trophy is my favourite <laughs> every year. It's just a stunning one.
Yeah, it's uh, quite extraordinary. And uh, John, of course, now will be with two runners in the, uh, the QE2 itself. Could well pull off, and it wouldn't be the first time he's done this, uh, the big no. race double on the day. He, uh, he's had a very good season, as well, he often has very good seasons. He's been very well acquainted with the uh, winner's podium, of course, the Rapid Dragon sweeping all before him in the four-year-old series, but some of his older horses have uh, done him proud, notably, of course, Werther, and this fellow now as well. He manages to get some of these fabulous horses over here, doesn't he? So um, he's due to retire in about two and a half years' time, and uh, I think that's going to be a bit of a concern. I think we need him here. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll be, he could uh, make a pitch for it. That's the great thing about racing, though, I suppose, whether it be horses or jockeys or trainers, even with the greats when they move yeah. on, someone's coming through to, uh, to fill their place. But, uh, yeah, it's another trophy, and it's a... We need a pretty big mantelpiece for that to sit on, wouldn't you? It's uh, a very sizable uh, trophy in itself. Um, we wouldn't write off Beauty Generation completely on that, given that he was giving all these horses weight this afternoon. Yeah, that's true, and I suppose he probably got a little bit of pressure. He's quite keen in the early stages of the race as well. I want to take another look just exactly to see what transpired in the concluding stages with him, but, uh, yeah, I did notice that in the early yeah. part. Well, he was nicely positioned on the rail, but he's probably a little bit too close to the speed as things have transpired, whereas the eventual winner, a little bit further back, he's been able to stay on. And oh, Beauty Generation, there are still plenty of races uh, for him in the future. That trophy, Jenny, just doing a little bit of research uh, mm -hmm. on it, was uh, discovered in a, a silver vault in London. It was, dates back to 1856 when Queen Victoria presented it to the winner of the Ascot Gold uh, Vase, Fisherman. So there's a bit of history about it. There's and a lot of history, yeah. and uh, it is. if you get up close to that, that is a, there you go, you can get yeah. a look at it there. <laughs> it's a cue. stunning photo. Well, the connections will be very happy to win it. Of that, there can uh, be no doubt. And uh, we're going to get the uh, patrol footage as well here, all 2,400 metres of it, and stand by for some uh, pretty eye-popping sectionals here as well. They went 24.66 to the first core, which was, uh, well, over a second faster than standard, nearly two seconds faster than standard to the second core, so it really was going to be survival of the fittest, as Brett said in the call as they came to the latter stages of the race. And uh, the uh, main protagonist early was Circuit Hassler. He's often front run, and he went to the front here very quickly in the hands of Matthew Chadwick and uh, well he didn't mess around beauty generation in second then on his outside we had Helene superstar uh, trapped uh, wide round the first turn was anticipation Dinozo is on his inside happy La baby uh, right up the inner as well then a little bit of a gap to prawn bar bar then right up the inside rail was eventual winner eagle way on the rail but just a little bit further off the speed there and perhaps that's just helped and he's been well positioned throughout basic trilogy was three wide round the turn then Andoyas supreme prophet who we'll see shortly making a bit of a mid race move then Helen Charisma was being ridden pretty quietly and Gold Mount another one ridden quietly who's come through uh, in the uh, latter stages of the race uh, to get involved so it's been an indication of just how quickly they've gone 24.66 to the first call 23.59 to the second and then 24.84 to the third that too comfortably understanded so they really haven't hung around here here comes uh, Supreme Prophet uh, making that mid race move that uh, Kei Chong tried here trying to uh, get uh, this horse's stamina more uh, to play but really she's only succeeded in injecting further speed into the contest to help those uh, coming from behind. Beauty Generation up the inside rail there in the hands of Zach Purton in fourth. Then Basic Trilogy right up the inside. Happy La Baby now just uh, losing a position or two. Also going back through the field to Len Superstar. Dinozo beginning now to make headway around the outside. Still Joe Moreira waits aboard the eventual winner. Prawn Barbar now being ridden along by Karis Teton but he's finished off pretty well as indeed as Len Charisma and Andoyas and Gold Mount. So this is where uh, eventually all the main players have come. They've come from off this speed and as they turn for home, well, the, uh, the petrol light on the dashboard is on for Circuit Hassler. Uh, also now being ridden along there was Basic Trilogy. Up the inside, Beauty Generation not finding a great deal, perhaps not surprising. And here towards the right of screen, where, where all the action takes place. Uh, the eventual winner, Eagle Way, coming through. Dinozo staying on well, so too. Helen Charisma. And from the back as well, Gold Mount has seen out every yard of the trip as well. He was staying on well. But as they went inside the final 150, it was Eagle Way and Helen Charisma battling it out. Again, looking around a little bit the second. Eagle Way, though gun barrel straight to take out the Queen Mother Memorial Cup. And they have weighed in on 3, 5, 6 and 9. The QPs 3 and 5, 38, 50. 3 and 6, 34, 50. 5 and 6, 72, 50. QPs on the Queen Mother Memorial Cup. Composite win. I went to the overnight favourites again. A1 was the selection you needed. $17 uh, your return there. Three and five, uh, the top two in the market. They ran one, two. And the winning trainer, B1 the selection. He had four going round. John Moore, $12. First four, three, five, six, and nine, $183.
three, five, six, and nine. The quartet, if you found that uh, in order, of three, five, six, and nine, 2,250. And of course, finishing in fourth uh, place there was Donoso. The double on five and six, uh, the two winners, one into three, $189.50. And the consolation, one into five, five Helene Charisma finishing second, $112. The triple trio. It's gone off $579,755 and races four, five, six, one, seven, eight, one, five, seven. And uh, that final leg there, the consolation, if you just got the first two legs, you're walking home with $4,345. And the sectional times, 2466 was the early split. This is where it really started to heat up though. 2359, 248, 242, 243, 2385, overall. It's a race where you know you see some of the best 10 furlong horses bump heads against each other and it's, there's always a great result. London News, he's everything they said and he wins. Aishan Preston sweeps up, goes to the front, Japanese history in Hong Kong. Viva Bataka, a John Moore, Mick Canan double. The derby winner, Ambitious Dragon, makes it three group ones in a row. Uh, probably the best race I've ever been in my life. Um, the feeling is just Amazing. Way goes rulership. He's destroying his rivals in the QE2 Cup. When you cross the line with a horse like that, uh, one of your dreams would just become true. He's roaring away with the QE2 Cup, and it's a big win for Blazing Speed, Neil Callan and Tony Cruz. Would it been like one of the top 10 races in the world? Like everybody wants to win one of those, so I was just uh, lucky enough to win, win it once, and now I've won it once, I want to win it again. Werther absolutely destroying them here in the Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup. Magnificent Werther. We get to get a very good idea, a very good line on the quality of a Hong Kong horse flesh. To win another QE would be another feather in the cap. Some great memories of some Audemars Piguet QE2 Cups from the past, and we're here to make another one. I'm very pleased to say we're joined here in the paddock as well by Nick Luck, a familiar face to European viewers and beyond as well. Nick, your first experience of Hong Kong, you've, you've attended most of the big races around the world. How are we stacking up so far? It's been a, an extraordinary, intense, and thoroughly enjoyable experience this last week, and really looking forward to seeing this race. I know there are relatively few runners in this year's QE2, but to have the last three winners of the race and three really interesting international competitors makes it a really spicy affair for me. Well, speaking of the international runners, we'll, we'll start with um, with Dicton, the, the, the French challenger. Placed in two classics last year, the form lines look very strong. Overlooked by anyone who wants to have a bet in the race, it seems, but probably oughtn't to be for two reasons. One, not fully exposed, probably still improving. Second, Olivier Pellier is a master on the international stage. And if there isn't much contested speed on early, I think this horse will settle. He does have a turn of foot, and he probably wants this distance of ground now. His third place in last year's Prix de Jockey Club, arguably one of the best bits of global form in the race behind Al Manzor. Is, is he your pick in the race, Nick? I'm not sure I'm confident enough, Jenny, to make it my pick in the race. Yep. I'm really not, because there's such a, a home advantage here. The last three winners, Pakistan star, still a horse on the upgrade. I think he's got a lot to do, but it wouldn't surprise me to see him run better than his price anticipates. All right, well, I'm going to leave you to it, boys, <laughs> and I'm going to go and check these horses out. And I'm fascinated by what you think of him as a specimen, because I think physically he's really cut the mustard on the track in the morning. He looks great. All right, well, I'll tell you in a minute. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll have a look at him uh, very shortly. We're going to kick things off, though, with uh, one of those uh, three former winners, as uh, Nick was saying, and that is Designs on Rome, uh, Jenny. Um, his big price here at $43, a derby winner as well back in his day. But it's just whether his day has uh, passed, uh, and that's the three Designs on Rome. Well, designs, yes, I think the uh, caption's just gone off him and we might be on to Werther, but uh, I can tell you about him because he's right in front of me. He actually looks good, the seven-year-old. You know, he's never one that shines from the parade on a general basis because he, he's never uh, an overly strong horse, but he actually is walking out really quite well and he looks good. So I don't mind him. I think designs looks good and, um, you know, he's going out at big odds here today. It might be a, a bit of an insult for him because he, he's a nice horse. Battle yourself through a... Uh through a crowd of people to actually uh, find him, Jenny, but uh, number one, whether he's been on the screen for a while. 
Yeah, Werther, um, I presume he's coming around this corner here. I've just got to duck and weave through a few people here. But uh, Werther, you can see how calm and relaxed he is. Now, he's an interesting one as far as parades go because this fellow, he can look like this and then all of a sudden he can go a bit sour. But you can see he's beautifully behaved here at the moment. He's got the ears pricked. He's not overly tall, but he's fit. He's very athletic. He's nice and healthy. He is bandaged on those bumpers as well, walking out beautifully and couldn't be any fitter. He's our dollar ninety favourite. This is Blazing Speed. He's the other previous winner, Jenny, from two years ago. Can he reclaim the crown? Oh, well, I'd like to see him do it. I mean, <laughs> uh, he's always been a bit of a favourite of mine, that's for sure. Blazing Speed. He's got such a lovely head on him. He's a lovely, strong horse. Uh, he looks in good order, definitely. Um, nice and healthy in his coat. He always has that sort of uh, treatment that's been used on those fetlock joints. That's always been the case for years, so I'm not overly concerned about that. He looks like he's walking out nice and freely. He's actually put on seven pounds. For for this race but he doesn't look bad for it that's for sure beautifully behaved and looks good yeah good old blazing speed he doesn't let you down at this trip of 2000 meters as well and of course he won this race uh, back in 2015 and uh, well he looks uh, certainly up for it today and uh, well 25 dollars that uh, seems a pretty interesting price about him this fella secret weapon has done all his best running at this trip of course he won the jockey club cup and ran a terrific race behind morris back at the international meeting yeah, look, he just needs to loosen up a little bit in front. He's quite a strong uh, chested and shouldered horse, and he is behaving himself really quite nicely, but he's just obviously been girthed up, and he just needs to loosen up in front. That's the only negative. Everything else about him is good. He's a nice, neat, strong type. $19 at the moment. Maybe, uh, again, one of the, the horses overlooked here, but uh, do it at uh, your peril because he is a... Um on his day, you ignore his uh, start a couple back, um, form outside of that with that uh, run behind Morris. Looks very strong in the Jockey Club Cup win earlier on the season as well. That was back in November, but uh, Secret Weapon currently is a $19 chance. Now, we've seen designs on Rome, we've seen Blazing Speed. This is uh, Neo Realism, uh, Jenny, who also, well, he actually has a, a victory over Morris to his credit. Uh, Neo Realism, yeah. Um, sorry, was I not just talking about him before? I thought uh, that's that's the horse I was talking about before Neo Realism. Oh, so right. no, my apologies there. Secret weapon. We oh, were a secret. We you know what? Secret weapon looks terrific. He looks fantastic. He's uh, he's sort of a big, strong-bodied horse. I know that there's been a bit of break in his track work. Um, so obviously his prep has been a little bit questionable. But the horse is walking out well, bandaged in front, strong, real scopy, athletic type, and beautifully behaved. So he actually parades well. Neo Realism is the one that I said has to loosen up just marginally in front. Did note that with him last time he was here as well but um you know he's a nice strong horse yeah you always got to uh, keep uh, the uh, the japanese horses when ridden by joe Moreira on side of course uh, uh, satono crown victorious in the hong kong vase and morris ridden to victory uh, this time last year in the champions mile he uh, is uh, a big hero over there in japan now the next is uh, the united states of course uh, representing the robert hickman yard he's had quite a career started off as a two-year-old in ireland has had quite a lot of success over in australia yeah look he has and he's a really consistent racehorse as well he's a seven-year-old entire he's uh, a very strong horse. I spoke with Robert, Robert Hickmott um, the other day and he was really happy with how he had settled in here as well. Of course, he has done a fair bit of travelling anyway, so it's not new to him. Um, he looks very alert. He's, uh, he's a bit warm around the flank area there. That's the only slight negative, I suppose, but walking out. And he's, uh, he's a strong-bodied horse. Some chance on look, but I don't think he looks bad. Yeah. Rebel Big Race Jockeys had some success in those colours in the past as well. Robert Hickmott and uh, Nick Williams here with the United States. I put him in the blazing speed sort of uh, category. Um, again, write him off at your peril. This is uh, Dixon then, uh, Jenny. Uh, how does he look? Uh, Nick, we're interested in how he's uh, here on race day. How's he looking to you? Yeah, look, he weighs in at 1,063 pounds, so he's not an overly strong-bodied horse, but he, and he's very small and sort of compact, um, but uh, he seems to be walking out quite okay. Um, he's healthy enough, and his attitude is very, very good for a, a colt as well. So, um, he, look, he's small, but he's, uh, he's fit and he's well-behaved. Yeah, the bell has sounded in the background for the uh, jockeys to go and get uh, united with their respective mounts for this race. But Dicton seems to be taking it all in his stride now, which uh, well, there were one or two nervous moments when he encountered the big screen and the, uh, uh, on, on track work a couple of days ago. But uh, the uh, rather well-populated 
parade ring here at Chartin doesn't seem to be causing him any problems as Olivier Pellier getting his orders uh, uh, from connections. The next is Pakistan star, this horse who created uh, quite a sensation in the early part of his career and he had a pretty good four-year-old series, Jenny. Yeah, look, he has um, no doubt about it and he's a, he's a very exciting young racehorse as well. He's had a, a fairly um, sort of solid campaign, that's for sure, but uh, he looks an absolute treat. Uh, he's holding his condition beautifully. He's beautifully behaved once again. He still walks out well and um, um, he's uh, he's looking in great shape. That trial of his was very good as well. He might be able to step up to the plate here. I mean, it's 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 a big assignment for him, but he does look very well. Those are the eight runners for the Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup. The jockeys are jumping on board. They will be leaving the yard uh, very shortly. So Jenny's got four to rule out, four to put in, Paul, as we have a look at the market. Well, there's still the favourite here at 1.9 odds on here. I'll just quickly go through the market. There's only eight of them. Secret Weapon at 19. Designs on Rome at 42. Blazing Speeds at 23. Neorealism is the third favourite at 4.7. 38 about the United States. 56 about Dicton. 3.1 Pakistan star. There's only three horses really in the market here, which is the one, the eight, and the five. Now, there's a big all-up going through as well in the Quinellas, and that's on the one and five as well. The current Quinella is paying 3.3, so a big hit on that. But where there's the favourite, odds on here in the Audemars PK QE2 Cup for 2017. Uh, here we go then, as the horses uh, leave the white yard. There is Secret Weapon, Designs on Rome, winner from uh, for 2014. Everyone seems to parade it uh, very well, Jenny. We'll get your top four from the paddock. We'll get Nick's top four as well in a second. Too. All right. Um, well, I'm going to go with the, the young horse, the exciting horse from Hong Kong. It's Pakistan Star. He's paraded absolutely superbly here today. Still walking around the yard. I can see him from behind here. He looks terrific. Really fit, beautifully behaved. He's healthy and well. So he, uh, he might be able to step up. So eight on top of number one, Werther. Werther looks terrific as well. He couldn't be any fitter looking. He's behaved himself beautifully. No sourness today. Um, that I've seen anyway, so he's, he's been in a really good mood. I thought the four had to go in as well, um, who is blazing speed. He's paraded beautifully as well. He often does, and uh, he's an old favourite of mine. He looks good, and he's been there and done it before. And of the rest, I'd go with the United States. I thought he actually paraded quite nicely as well. Just a little warm around the flank area there, but his, his coat's superb, walks out nice and freely. He's got some really good strength about him as well. So in order for me, I'm going 8, 1, 4, and 6. There he goes, Pakistan star on top from the yard. Don't give the game away completely here, Nick, but just on what you've seen, much as Jenny, just uh, judging on the horse flesh itself, what impressed you then? Well, the horse I, I liked at a big price earlier in the week was Blazing Speed, and nothing I've seen in the paddock has done anything to dissuade me. I thought he looked magnificent. I'm interested to hear Jenny say he's a horse who always shows himself off well. He's a good, hardy old pro. Rarely takes more out of himself than he absolutely needs to. Very tough racehorse. I think the race and pace setup could suit him ideally, and for me, he was the pick of the paddock. Excellent stuff. Well, Pakistan Stars won the best turned out, though, and uh, Connections just taking that prize there. So we'll, we'll come back and get Nick's uh, top four in a second. Uh, but first, Brett, your thoughts here on the big one. Thanks very much, Andrew. Yes, it's a terrific race, only a field of eight, but it's so well-rounded. You could make a case for a number of horses uh, for various reasons. Um, in the past, the Derby form has, has been a very strong form reference coming into this race. Uh, of course, that was very evident last year with the performance of Werther. Um, Pakistan star, second behind Rapid Dragon in the Classic Cup, and then the Derby. I, I think it's an outstanding form line. I think if Rapid Dragon was in this race, he would be the favourite as opposed to Werther. Pakistan star, he's come a long way in the last 12 months. He's maturing uh, with more and more racing. Yes, he's been up for a long time, but his races have been well spaced. And uh, I think with a smaller field today, he can race handy. He may potentially be able to rip out a 21.5 final 400 on this good to firm track. And if he does, I think he'll have the superior turn of foot. So I think uh, it's his day in the, in the sun today, Pakistan star. He gets his opportunity at the highest level. So I'm going with him, and I've made him the best of the day. Um, for the dangers, I'm going to throw in number five, Neo Realism. I think he'll be rolling on the lead. Joe Marrera uh, will be certainly having uh, the timepiece rolling in his mind uh, with regards to the sectionals, knowing the capabilities of some of the horses behind him. And I think he'll run a big race for Japan. They often do when they come here. Werther, he's done very little wrong. He's the defending champ, and he deserves to be the favourite. And for fourth place, I'm going with number four, Blazing Speed. Uh, a veteran sort of status now, but uh, the ultimate warrior 
Of course, he's won this race in the past. I think he'll be right there when the whips are cracking. But Pakistan star for me to overhaul them and win the QE2 Cup. 8, 5, 1 and 4. Thanks very much, Brett. I've got the same numbers, different order, though. I think Werther can win this race. Uh, the reason is that he's been set for this race. This has been his target the whole um, the whole way going forward. And I think uh, he's spot on for this. To beat uh, Neo Realism, he's obviously the, 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 the one from overseas. I think he can give him a, the big fright. Joe Marrera aboard, and uh, he should get a nice run in front. Pakistan star, I thought his main aim this season was the derby. Now, uh, this is a, an after, not an afterthought as such, but he would, he, I would have thought he would have peaked on the derby. And he did run a good second there. So I put him in for third. And then four, Blazing Speed, of course, who's won this race previously. But weather for me, all the way. One, five, eight, and four. Yeah, I'm with Werther as uh, well, Paul. The, uh, the conditions couldn't be any more different uh, to last year's race, but I think the result will be the same. Might not be the same margin, but he's, I think he's got the local uh, brigades uh, beat, including Pakistan Star. He'll meet him for the first time, but uh, just whether Pakistan Star can make up the ground, whatever ground he gives uh, Werther as a head start down the straight. So I think he'll be finishing fast, but whether he quite gets there or not, we will see. Of the others, well, I like Dixon a lot. I think the form out of France last year looks very strong. He had a good tune-up at the start of this year behind a very good sprinter, Myler, doing all his best work late and at $52. That is a good price in anyone's book for a horse with the form that he does have. Olivier Pellier in the saddle and also near realism. Just so I'm getting a little bit toe. He's wearing the hood. He'll wear the hood here in the yard. He'll wear it down to the start. Then they'll take it off. Um, he'll obviously be out there in front, but uh, I'm not sure he'll be there when they cross the line. We'll go. One, eight, seven and five, John. Thanks very much, Andrew. Yeah, um, similar numbers uh, to most of the uh, guys before. I'm going to go with Pakistan star on top, though. I saw this fellow barrier trial about uh, 10 days ago, and he showed terrific gate speed, the kind of gate speed he hasn't been showing for his entire career. And uh, from the draw he gets this afternoon, uh, gate three, he should be able to get himself into maybe a better running position than he has done so far. Uh, Werther is clearly a very, very good horse, and I was really impressed with him uh, when he won uh, the international, or the gold, sorry, the Hong Kong Gold Cup uh, two starts ago, uh, fending off blazing speed, of course, in the process. He had nothing go right that day, very muddling pace. He got knocked around in the run. He still found a way to win and that'll stand him in good stead today he doesn't have his favourite soft ground but he'll still go very well got the five there in uh, for third position Neo Realism the Japanese horse he'll go pretty well as well um, he's probably better at this longer trip than he was at the mile where he's a bit disappointing when he came here back in December and uh, Blazing Speed's got to be in there as well of course he ran Werther very close only a couple of months ago uh, so on a strict interpretation of that form he shouldn't be the price that he is so for me eight one five and four well, on looks, I had to go with the eight here, Pakistan star. I thought he paraded beautifully. He's actually put on 24 pounds, but he looks good for it, that's for sure. In fact, that was around about his winning weight when he first stepped out and made that impressive debut. Uh, the horse looks good. He's, he's so relaxed in the parade these days. He looks fantastic. Number one, Werther definitely has to go in. Uh, he looked terrific as well. He can sometimes, as I said, show some sourness. There was hardly any of that here today. He looked in great shape and really, really fit. Uh, Blazing Speed definitely has to go in as well. The four thought he paraded beautifully. He's a horse that can often carry a little bit of condition. He always does, but he looks uh, in great shape here today. I think Tony's got him as well as he can be at this age. And then of the rest, number six, the United States. I thought he paraded particularly well. Just slightly warm. Everything else about him was good. I liked his fluency as well, so he went in as fourth choice there. Eight, one, four, and six. Here we go, down at the start then for the QE2. You liked him in the yard then, Nick, uh, blazing speed, and uh, you like him in the form book as well. Well, I do. I think he's the horse who's overpriced, clearly. Won the race two years ago. Incredibly consistent. There may be horses who could improve past him, but we're only saying they might improve past him. His form ties in closely with Werther and Pakistan Star, but he's guaranteed to run his race, this horse, on the fast surface that he likes. He's got that stalk and pounce profile that in what could be a muddling and uncontested race pace-wise ought to suit this, and that's why I think he can outrun his odds today. He and Neil Callan are a match made in heaven. The horse is very tough. Callan's known as the Iron Man. He's a fierce competitor. He adores this horse. He has so much confidence in him and I think that's crucial in a race like this and of the international runners who, who's going to run best of those do you think well, evidently the horse with the the best form is near realism but it's a question for me as to whether he's going to settle you described him as being towing on the track Andrew he's been towing all week he wears the hood very interesting to me that uh, the trainer Horry's assistants were gate schooling him intensively on Thursday morning they're clearly concerned that he needs to get out of that gate fast and control this race from the front but Joe Moreira's task is to make sure he does that without the horse expending too much energy and being fresh and keen. And the signs in the paddock and on the way down are that he might just take a grip and that could just compromise his chance, which is why I think one or two might pass him close home. 
It is going to be very interesting, these test tactics, aren't they? Because obviously we've got designs on Rome who could possibly make a bit of a mid-race move, but he might not. He might want to just wait. And Pakistan star, who's likely to get back as well, and they'll be watching what's going on in front. Well, Jenny, I just wondered whether you, the United States might do something a bit different today. Was a hold-up horse early in his career, has been ridden a bit more forward latterly in Australia. Given that it's a, a roll of the big dice for his connections, mm -hmm. and they're here to, to have a good time, but to pick up a large amount of prize money, I wonder whether they might go forward with him today and, and, and try and make use of a, a bit more stamina. Well, quite possibly, possibly, quite possibly, yeah. And, and of course, Joe, you've got such a great judge of pace out there on a horse mm. like Neo-Realism as well. So I think tactically it's going to be very interesting, this race. Certainly will be. 60 seconds away from a start. We'll take a quick check on the markets uh, with Paul Werther's holding up, Paul. Yeah, even money for Werther. Uh, Pakistan starts coming in a little bit, though. He's into 2.9, 4.6 about neorealism. They're the three. And then we get to 20 about uh, Secret Weapon, who's coming a little bit. But uh, punters have narrowed it down to three. Werther, the Pakistan star, and neorealism. There we go. And uh, not too far away from a jump. With these sort of races, John, at this yeah. sort of level, we're only generally talking about small margins between defeats and victories so it's, it might well come down to the right well as i said the, the gold cup a couple of weeks ago a couple of months ago here back here back in february that was a pretty uh, small margin in, in a tactical race as well so something similar may eventuate here but uh, and of course if you're watching hong kong racing haven't watched it very much before there's a pretty quick turn at that first bend over 2,000 metres, so a tactical position is absolutely critical. Werther's in a good position to get one. Pakistan Star's in a good position to get one as well. So interesting to see how those two go. Generally speaking, Nick, they've talked about Pakistan Star sitting a bit closer than Rani's trial quite well from that position, but as a general get-back horse, it wouldn't be the end of the world if he was last in a field of eight, would it? As long as he had speed to run up, that's the key. They, I, I think even at this distance, he still needs to have the race slightly collapse around him. I don't think just because the distance of the race is greater than some of the races he's been winning, he can change his natural running game. I don't think racing's as straightforward as that. I'd still prefer Pakistan in a bigger field with a more contested pace, even at this distance. For all, he's an improving horse. I think he'll run very well, but will he quite get there? I'm not sure. I was interested in the thinking about the champions in Chader still as well after this race over 2,400. And as I say, he'll, uh, he'll not be too far away in the Vars in December. It's been a big campaign for him, Jenny, so far, hasn't it, Pakistan? Son? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, when I spoke with Tony about him as well, he was saying, you know, he might back off him after this race, but then he also said, I'll see how he pulls up. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing, isn't it, Jenny? It's a question yeah. of whether the horse has just had one race too many or whether he's fresh enough to run a career best, which he's going to need to today. Yeah, he's definitely going to have to do that today, but he might be up for the task. He just might be. And condition-wise in the paddock, does he look like a horse who's had a load of racing or is he carrying no. it quite well? He's actually put on weight and he looks terrific. He looks really well. So um, I think he's thriving, actually. Dixon just getting a little bit warm down there at the start. It's a humid afternoon, but he's just getting a little bit uh, on, his, on his toes. Is that sort of uh, profile in Europe as well? Yeah, and, and he's a horse who's been exhibiting those tendencies during the week. He's ridden by a very experienced girl who rides him every day, and she's been settling in beautifully on the track in the morning, so I think they're very pleased with his preparation. But you know, it's his, his first big taste of major international competition outside his own backyard, and you know, whatever he does today, I think he's a viable horse for this type of race going forward. He might just find the experience a bit much, but as I say, I think he's got the talent to be a, a player in races like this in, in due course. And of course, coming from France, it's the start of his season, whereas it's the sort of middle to end of others. So uh, I think he's a, he's a horse we may well see back here in Hong Kong at a later date. Yeah, interesting as well. Trained by an Italian in France, uh, Gianluca Biettoloni. But here we go as they start to move forward to, for the Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup. Werther's our favourite, the defending champ, Brett. Can he do it again? Thanks very much, Andrew. Yes, they're moving up for our feature race of the day. The Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup 2017, a field of eight, three previous winners. And uh, the three international horses, Neo Realism for Japan, the United States for Australia, and Dicton for France with Olivier Pellier to ride. Blazing speed about to move up. Pakistan star and Neo Realism still to move into the gates. $1.90 for Werther, the defending champion. 2.9 Pakistan star, Neo Realism at 4.7, double figures the rest. The field of eight are set, stand by for a start. The Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup and they're off and racing. Dicton was the slowest out of the gates. Pakistan Star was one of the fastest out of the gates. And he's over racing a little bit in the early stages with no real speed to report. 
The United States has rolled over and takes the lead as they work out of the stretch from Pakistan Star, who now settles better on his back. Blazing Speed is third, racing with no cover. A length and a half away then to Werther, who's already off the fence at the 1600 metre point on the outside of Dicton. A length further back then to the Japanese Galloper, who some thought might lead. He's back third last on the outside of Secret Weapon, and two and a half further back to Designs on Rome at the tail. Inside the 1400 metres, and the leader is the United States for Brett Preble. Shows the way by two lengths on. Blazing speed, Pakistan Star is third. Werther is tracking lovely fourth, a little bit keen with no tempo. Followed by Dicton on the inside of Neo Realism. They are really crawling for this calibre of Galloper. Followed then by Secret Weapon, who's second last. They're going that slow. The designs on Rome has joined them at the 1,000 metre point. And the leader is now neo-realism as he rolls forward Marrera and takes over from the United States. Blazing speed third, two back to Werther on the outside of Pakistan Star as they quicken up. Then came Dicton, two further back to Secret Weapon. Designs on Rome now run off his legs, nine from the speed. Neo-realism, Joe Marrera with the Audemars Piguet timepiece rolling in his mind. Comes up to the home corner, 500 metres out, a half on blazing speed. The United States placed under pressure. Werther's tracking into the race beautifully. Two further back to Pakistan Star. Then Secret Weapon, Dicton and Designs on Rome. Neo-realism still has it, a half on Werther and blazing speed. Pakistan Stan Star, the Jets have been turned on, thundering down the middle, but Neo Realism's got a kick. Pakistan Star trying to reach him with Werther and blazing speed. Neo Realism fights on strongly. Pakistan Star tries hard. Japan have won the QE2 Cup again with Neo Realism from Pakistan Star and Werther. Blazing speed, the United States secret weapon, Dicton and designs on Rome. Well, it was a race of tactics, wasn't it? They went pedestrian-like through the first six to eight hundred. Joe Marrera said, I've had enough of this. He whipped around them, took the lead, rated neorealism perfectly. Pakistan star a little bit off the bit when they cornered for home. He's picked up late. He's gone down fighting. But Japan have won another international group one on foreign soil. 5-8-1-4, Neorealism, Joe Marrera, Noriyuki Hori. The Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup and they're off and racing. Dicton was the slowest out of the gates. Pakistan Star was one of the fastest out of the gates. And he's over racing a little bit in the early stages with no real speed to report. The United States has rolled over and takes the lead as they work out of the stretch from Pakistan Star, who now settles better on his back. Blazing Speed is third, racing with no cover. A length and a half away then to Werther, who's already off the fence at the 1600 metre point on the outside of Dicton. A length further back then to the Japanese Galloper, who some thought might lead. He's back third last on the outside of Secret Weapon, and two and a half further back to Designs on Rome at the tail. Inside the 1400 metres, and the leader is the United States for Brett Preble. Shows the way by two lengths on. Blazing speed, Pakistan Star is third. Werther is tracking lovely fourth, a little bit keen with no tempo. Followed by Dicton on the inside of Neo Realism. They are really crawling for this calibre of Galloper. Followed then by Secret Weapon, who's second last. They're going that slow. The designs on Rome has joined them at the 1,000 metre point. And the leader is now Neo Realism as he rolls forward Marrera and takes over from the United States. Blazing speed third, two back to Werther on the outside of Pakistan Star as they quicken up. Then came Dicton, two further back to Secret Weapon. Designs on Rome now run off his legs, nine from the speed. Neo Realism, Joe Marrera with the Audemars Piguet timepiece rolling in his mind, comes up to the home corner, 500 metres out, a half on blazing speed. The United States placed under pressure. Werther's tracking in the race beautifully. Two further back to Pakistan Star, then Secret Weapon Dicton and, and Designs on Rome. Neo Realism still has it a half on Werther and Blazing Speed. Pakistan Star, the Jets have been turned on, thundering down the middle, but Neo Realism's got a kick. Pakistan Star trying to reach him with Werther and Blazing Speed. Neo Realism fights on strongly. Pakistan Star tries hard. Japan have won the QE2 Cup again.
They certainly have won, but they've been held by an absolutely masterful ride by uh, the local boy, Joe Moreira. What a fantastic performance that was in the saddle. Uh, defeating Pakistan star, who's come with a re real old rattle to finish in second, as he often does. And Werther has finished in third, not beaten far. There's Moreira coming back in uh, aboard the uh, victorious neorealism. And uh, before we uh, dissect that race, we can go up to Paul for the dividends. And he ends up paying... Uh, Forty-five dollars for win, fifteen fifty a place, twelve fifty for second, ten fifty for Werther a gallon defeat in third. As was the second Pakistan star. Quinella five and eight returned sixty-six fifty. The trio one five and eight returns twenty-six dollars with the three favourites featuring there. And the tears five eight and one two hundred and sixty-three. What a thrilling contest, guys! Yeah, it certainly was. It was uh, great to watch it down here. It was tackling, it, it tactical, it was muddling. All sorts went on, but it was a fantastic finish. We suspected it might have a yeah. touch of the wacky races about it for a, a grade one event, but I think it surpassed even yeah. our expectations in that regard. Pedestrian early yeah. pace in the extreme, Jenny. And Marrera's move, you have to have so much confidence to do that, because if it had gone wrong, he would have been severely censured yes. for making that massive mid-race move, but he, he couldn't have it any longer. He couldn't have that pace any longer. No, Here we I go. Could... We've got, well, sorry to interrupt you, Jenny, but we've got uh, Andrew Lejeune, who's down there in the uh, paddock or in the uh, winner's enclosure with Joe Moreira. Here he is. Joe, fantastic ride, fantastic race. <laughs> A lot of emotion down here in the winner's enclosure as uh, Joe takes the congratulations. Um, preconceived or was it just a spur of the moment, that move? Well, when you win such a kind of race, obviously you would be at the top of the moon. So, yeah, the feeling of being winning this race is very special. Uh, telling you the way how it happens. Obviously, he didn't really jump very well as we expected. We thought he was going to be able to lead, but as he jumped jump a little bit slow, I had to give him a chance to get cover behind horses. And then, as the pace is slow, just so much at the back straight, I just allowed him to pop out and get going. And he got going not at his top speed, so I was always confident that once we turned for home, he was going to be able to finish it off strong, which he did. Uh, Japanese horses, they've been strong everywhere, everywhere they, where they go, and I'm very blessed for being He's jockey today. Congratulations. Brazilian jockeys go okay as well. That's uh, Joe Moreira there, successful on neorealism. What a yeah, Andrew Lejeune doing sterling work there, getting in amongst the action. We didn't manage to catch all of the interview, one or two uh, little technical problems here. <laughs> yes. I would guess he's rather happy, though. I would guess so, and uh, what, is, what a great ride, and how well summed up was it from Joe with that really slow pace in the mid part of the race, taking off at the right time, having uh, the guts to do it, actually, yeah. Nick. Um, there was a few more surprises. I mean, Pakistan star jumped so well as well. It was all upside down for Pakistan yep. star. That was the worry. Because there was no pace, he's able to get there in a good position. He's jumped well, and then he's keen. He's yep. keen into the bridle early, taken a bit too much out of himself, dropped back when Moreira injected the pace, got found wanting for pace, and then has run on as the race started to collapse late. It's a slow, fast, slow race, yep. running a very slow time. Pakistan star needs an end-to-end -end gallop and wants to be sat chilly. I'm sure that'll bring out the best in him. He's run a great race. He certainly has the type of race that sort of made a man of him this afternoon, certainly, and it was a, a terrific, terrific Effort. You know what, John? This winner is not an easy horse, is he? No, There's not, not one thing about the way he races that makes a jockey's life straightforward. Yeah. It, it was all very well in theory to say he'd lead and he'd be the controlling pace, but as soon as he jumped, Joe Moreira knew that if he did that, the horse would run too keen. Mm -hmm. But it was just a question of when to make the move. Well, it was quite obvious that Joe wanted to take him back and, and try and get him to relax, and he actually was able to do that. But then when the pace was so slow, he had to do something um, because it was just packing up in front of him, so he took off at the right time. Yes, your average milk float will have gone faster to the first uh, 400 metres uh, than they uh, did there on that particular occasion. It was incredibly slow. Uh, the United States, of course, setting it, but yet that big move down the far side has uh, proved to be uh, proved to be decisive. What do you think about Werther? Is it a fair assessment that he looked a very, very good horse when it rained, but he's just a pretty good horse on a, on a sound surface? Well, you know as well as I do, Nick, that uh, sometimes soft ground can accentuate these things. We all remember Hawkwing winning the Lockage many years ago mm -hmm. in certain in similar circumstances. Um, he was, yeah, he was a little bit fortunate last year. I thought he was tremendous, though, back in February in the sense that against a very similar field of very good local horses, he managed to, to find a way of getting, getting it done. But here, possibly the, the, the opposition's slightly higher class. I think, I think he's a very good horse, but he's a better horse on the wet. A yeah. dominant horse on the wet. As, as for this horse, I suppose the question he's answered today is whether he could do it outside Japan, yeah. whether he could travel and win a big race. On what now, I wonder, for him? Will they be thinking in terms of a possible Arc de Triomphe bid next year, I wonder? 
Well, they're interesting. They always like to target one, don't they? Of course, uh, that horse that won the Japan Cup back in November, um, Kitasan Black, I think he's been targeted mm. for uh, for the arc. Whether they'll go with uh, there with that fella, I don't know. I think he might be a good one to come back here for the Hong Kong Cup in December, 2,000 metres. Nick, you've seen plenty of uh, fantastic jockeys over the years. What do you make of Joe Marrera? Well, he, he has an extraordinary ability to get horses to relax underneath him. And th as I said, this horse does not look straightforward. And off such a slow pace, he's managed to get him to switch off today. And then to make that move, it just shows what confidence he's riding with. He's won four out of the seven races so far, four out of the eight races yep. so far that, yep. uh, this afternoon. He, 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 he has just taken Hong Kong by storm. And you guys know much better than, than me how difficult it is to do that here. Absolutely. And of course, it was only a few weeks ago he rode eight on the card. Yes. Eight out of ten. It, it was, was winner uh, after winner yeah. after winner. <laughs> that weighing in scale seat was just, <laughs> it just put his name on it, really. Um, uh, it was incredible. And four winners today. We get a bit blasé with it because we're yeah. used to him riding three, four, five winners. It's sort of the norm here. It's such tough competition. It's a small group of jockeys yeah. plucked, hand-picked from all parts of the globe to dominate here makes him a very special talent indeed. He's Absolutely. had a great association with the Japanese trainers as well. He's yeah. ridden over there in the off-seasons on a couple of occasions. He enjoys that as well. So um, um, it remains to be seen whether or not he's going to do that again this year, but he, he does enjoy it. And of course, this time last year, he was partnering Morris to victory, wasn't he, in the Champions Mile? And of course, the Tono Crown just blew them away in the Hong Kong bars under Marrera uh, in December. So uh, yeah, he's got a great association uh, with the Japanese. The trainer has been talked of in glowing terms yeah. by better judges than, than me during the course of this week, saying that he could have a touch of the genius about him. He could be a, an Aidan O'Brien type of trainer who could dominate his, his nation and, and the Far East. Yeah. Is that a fair assessment? Well, I think so. Certainly he has the reputation of being a, a no-stone left unturned man. Every single angle is covered. You were talking about the, uh, the barrier practice uh, mm. over the last couple of days. That's clearly held this horse uh, uh, in good stead uh, for this afternoon. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's done, he's done marvellously well in a relatively short space of time as well. And doing everything to try and keep him calm as well yeah. with the hood on here in the parade, get it off when you get behind the gates there as well. The horse actually interesting for me, Nick, um, last time he was here in Hong Kong, he's not the most smooth walking horse in front and he's exactly the same again, but it obviously doesn't affect his galloping action. They are tough, mm. the Japanese bred horses, yeah. as, a, as a general rule. They do keep finding for a little bit of pressure, even if they were a bit high metalled in the, in the prelims. It wouldn't be the first horse from that country that we've seen follow that sort of a pattern. It's a triumph for technology as well, as we yes. were saying earlier in the week. <laughs> uh, a horse who, whose work rider has been wearing the specially customised goggles this week, which show him the sectional times yeah. as, he's, as he's exercising him and also show him the heart rate of the horse and what sort of work he's putting in. And that goes back to Japan to the trainer. They'll, all, they'll be all the rage very soon, but uh, here we are. We're going to uh, get the presentation uh, to Near Realism and Connections very shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, the trophy presentation of the Audemars Piguet QE2 car will now commence. The 2017 Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup, one of the world's premier 2,000 metre turf races, has concluded. Today we saw a truly spectacular performance from high calibre horses competing for Group 1 glory. Let us now invite Dr Simon Ip, Chairman of the Hong Kong Jockey Club, to present the Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup and a bronze horse statuette to Cara Farm Company Limited, the winning owner of Neo Realism. 這次我們有請香港賽馬會主席葉石安博士就是將愛比到王杯以及進馬銅獎就是頒發給我們星出頭馬新寫十派的馬主 May we now have Dr. Simon Ip to present the bronze horse statuettes to the winning trainer, Nadia Kihori. And of course, to our winning jockey, Joao Moreira. Guys, we have the Yves Saint Gon Boxy. We have the Jungle 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 of Odemar Piguet to present the Odemar Piguet Royal Oak Self-Winding Watch to winning owner Carrot Farm Company Limited. 
我哋而家外俾大中华区行政总裁范伟先生，就系将一枚爱俾皇家橡树系列自动上链换标，自送俾我哋胜出头马嘅马主噶。Carrot Farm Company Limited， what a beautiful watch。Next, let's invite Mr. Eve Malan, Chief Commercial Officer of Onuma PK, to present a customized trophy to winning trainer Nori Yuki Hori. We are giving the Chief Commercial Officer of Onuma PK to present a customized trophy to winning trainer Nori Yuki Hori. We are giving the Chief Commercial Officer of Onuma PK to present a customized trophy to winning trainer Nori Yuki Hori. We are giving the Chief Commercial Officer of Onuma PK to present a customized trophy to winning trainer Nori Yuki Hori. 有請咧，我哋二零一七年愛美女王杯大師李嘉欣小姐咧，就自送獎助咧俾雷神莫雷拉噶。咁當然咧，我哋又亦都有請勝出騎師自送花束俾李嘉欣小姐。What a day! Congratulations on the fabulous win! In honor of the winning owner, please stand for the national anthem of the winning country, Japan, played by the Hong Kong Police Band. 而家我哋有請警察樂隊演奏勝出頭馬所代表國家日本嘅國歌，為勝出馬主致敬。有請各位起立。Presentation. Congratulations once again to winning owner, trainer, and jockey. 唔该晒咁多位嘅外宾女王杯二零一七嘅颁奖仪式咧，嚟到呢度已经系圆满结束啦。喺呢度再次恭喜新写十派嘅马主练马师同埋骑师。Okay, well, congratulations to all concerned uh, with neorealism. They have now indeed weighed in for the Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup. $45, the um, dividend there. Horses are in the uh, parade ring for the next. But there's your winner of the big one. Now we can take a look at the patrol footage for the 2017 Audemars Piguet QE2 Cup and uh, well there was all sorts going on in the early stages but the most notable thing uh, was the fact that Neorealism who was really pulling very hard didn't go to the front, the United States did uh, and set a first sectional of 28.03 seconds funereal pace in the early stages blazing speed on the outside there in second Pakistan star got out of the gates really well I've never seen him uh, get out as well as that and he was uh, up the inside there in third Werther in fourth position followed then by the French challenger Dicton up the inside rail and then we had the eventual winner Neorealism as Nick said before was really pulling in the early stages then secret weapon on the inside and designs on Rome where, we always, where he always is in these situations right at the rear of the field but by now they really were crawling 28.03 to the first call very slow still very slow to the second they're 26.77 did start to pick up uh, once uh, that move was made by Neorealism and that's probably helped the likes of Pakistan star they would not not really have enjoyed this pace early at least it's made it not quite an end-to-end -end gallop, but at least a sort of halfway to end gallop anyway. And here now is when the eventual winner in the hands of uh, the master tactician here at Chartin, Joe Moreira, went through to take it up. And he uh, quickly went into a length or two advantage over the United States in second. Blazing speed covering every move in third. Were there a fraction wide round the turn? We see that Pakistan star got obviously got a little bit outpaced. That injection of pace came. 
Ben Dicton, followed by Secret Weapon, and by now Designs on Rome was being ridden along. It's here when the uh, the pace began just to get ratcheted up on the outside. Blazing Speed now tries to lay down a challenge to Neo Realism. Then on the inside, the United States, for whom uh, Push was now coming to shove, were around the outside. He's really getting going on Pakistan Star as well, Sylvester de Souza. Uh, he had four or five lengths to make up, and he nearly did it in the latter stages. This Neo Realism, expertly ridden by Marrera, just had a little bit more of his sleeve when required. Werther has tried very hard to overhaul him, hasn't been able to quite manage to do it. Blazing Speed has run another really honourable race in defeat. He's finished a close at fourth. Pakistan Star is definitely a one for another day, but today has been all about Neo Realism and the genius of Joe Marrera. And the weight in here on uh, race number nine. The sectional times 28.03, 26.77. That was eight, race eight, of course. 24.99, 22.39. Home in 22.41. The race time was 204.59.